I have a quick question for you, Yuval, before you take it away and introduce us to the artists. How did you go about taking up Dr. Gold's vision for this album and bringing it into a musical form? Yes, um, Beth, when I started thinking about those four higher virtues that Dr. Gold asked me to convey and uh, invoke with music, I was thinking about mantras. You see, mantras are something that has been used in ancient India for thousands of years, and it's simply chanting Sanskrit words. And there are short lines that you keep repeating and chanting, and they have a special power on your mind and on your body. And um, I thought if we could get the listeners to sing along and to chant mantras, sacred phrases that invoke the power of these higher virtues, maybe we could make an impact in the world. And so I wrote these songs that have this repeated chanting, repeated chanting, and it works with a call and answer, call and answer, which is called kirtan style in India. And I chose four singers to sing the lead. And I was hoping that the audience, the listeners, will sing the response. Uh, when I, I thought about the four divine states of mind, what came to my mind suddenly is four divine goddesses the feminine goddess, the sound of the voice. And I felt we really need more of that sound in this world. So I decided to bring four vocalists, both uh, that are extraordinarily talented, that are spiritual, that are celebrated all over the world for their talent. And I chose Deva Pramal, Estrella Morente, Uyanga Bold, and Chloe Purmoradi, who are really carrying the message for us through their voice. And we have a video showing how we worked with Deva Pramal in the studio and an interview with Deva. Deva speaks about the power of mantras from her experience. So please enjoy this um, travel through India and Australia and Los Angeles. See how we worked on this song called Vicarious Joy, which is in Sanskrit called Mudita. Enjoy. Okay, cool. So this kind of more it's such a great occasion to be in the studio with Somna Troy, the great percussionist from India. And his joyful rhythms really, really drive the beat for this track, which is called Vicarious Joy. Pandit Nayan Ghosh from India is one of the greatest living sitar masters, and I love working with him. having Deva Pramal sing with us on this track. She's one of the greatest mantra singers in the world and the mantra that she's singing on this song, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu, is a mantra that I've been chanting for 20 years in my yoga practice. And it's a central, central practice to condition our mind to always think about the happiness of the other who is really us. I hope this music will make you dance. I hope it will make you celebrate joy and cultivate the mindset of vicarious joy. Mudita.
I think that's the, the most, the, the biggest longing we have is for wholeness because we always feel so split within already, you know. We're all so used to all these conflicting voices inside and that's what tears us apart, that's what brings the restlessness and so I think all meditation practice is actually to bring us kind of in tune, you know, like single-pointed, you know, awareness, but just like an open, relaxed awareness. And that's, I feel the mantras and the chanting and the actual singing and chanting, that's what it really can bring, yeah. And they are ancient sounds, so they are, they are, um, they are like medicine and sound, they are scientific, you know, it's, they are very specific, which sound vibrates, which part of the body, which part of your metaphysical body with, with uh, what focus every mantra has. So um, I always see it like that there are different doors all to the same space, you know. Like, I mean, we can choose different mantras because maybe we are more drawn to one or the other. It makes us feel more comfortable. But actually, once we chant and we go into it, we'll always end, you know, or arrive or rest in the same space, which is basically just nothingness, silence, love, you know, light, whatever you want to call it. Actually, there's nothing, there's no more words, so it's difficult anyway to give, give a word. But um, so for me, I'm, I just love it. Yeah. or vicarious joy, I feel is so apt for this composition by Yuval and uh, it gives a beautiful feeling of freedom as if one is flying high above the clouds, very soulful. The sitar has been a part of our family tradition and like the tabla, I have grown up with these two instruments and sitar especially um, I've been playing since my childhood it gives me tremendous peace and joy and I feel it's a, it's an extension of me myself. This composition Mudita is really something so special. I've been very happy to be a part of it. Yuval has created a beautiful, wonderful piece. It, uh, the musical vibration really uplifts the spirit. It's so blissful, so simple yet so touching, so sacred. And it just stays on and lingers on in your mind. Very soulful music. Thank you, Yuval, for making me a part of it. According to the Sanskrit language, mudita, definitely it's a resorious joy, the happiness. And for me, yes, I am happy and I am liable to spread the happiness all over the world. The track mudita, when I listen for accompanying it. The first impression came to me like I'm in a very uh, lonely, I'm staying in a very lonely place and I'm alone and I'm happy and from that corner I am spreading happiness to all over the world. That's my feelings. My instrument is my everything uh, actually. How could I tell? It's, it's my heartbeat, it's, it's my pulse, it's with me, it's me actually. So, this instrument and me, I cannot differentiate it. Uh, 
probably with the same. The other track that we recorded for this album, it's actually the opening track. It's called Loving Kindness, Meta in Sanskrit. And for this track, I invited Chloe Pumordi, who's the young and talented singer from Los Angeles. I invited her to come and sing the vocals. And the song is really about the mother for me, loving kindness, the love of a mother for a child. It's, it's an expression of divine love. And in order to have a mantra that works with loving kindness, I reached out to an ancient mantra from India called Aham Prema. Aham Prema means I am divine love. And imagine if each one of us would practice this and walk through life with this awareness that we are divine love. Wherever we go, we are divine love. We are already. We just forgot. We just forget all the time. So if we could contemplate and meditate on this and carry it, and we could do it through chanting, Aham Prama, I am divine love. That is, that, that is the path that we created in this album. And to complement Chloe Pormoadia, I invited a great master of an ancient sitar-like instrument, but it's not a sitar, it's called sarod. It's more rare than sitar. It's a beautiful, beautiful instrument. It has a beautiful silver uh, fingerboard. You will see it in the next, uh, in the next uh, video. That recording was done by a great master named Alam Khan, who is the son of the great Ali Akbar Khan, who was the greatest sarod player in the world. And now his son is carrying on the tradition. So enjoy this video of how we recorded Loving Kindness with Chloe Pumodi and Alam Khan. <laughs> When I hear the words loving kindness or metta, I think of one of the divine attributes, which is a very, very gentle love. A gentle love that surrounds each of us, whether we see it or not, whether we like it or not, that is always there without reason. That is always there. And in the music, in the track, of loving kindness, I feel you can really, really hear that gentle love in a very timeless way. The way that the music continues, continues and repeats. It's a lot like the love of the divine, which will always, always continue and never cease to be present. I think music, especially the voice, using the voice is one of our highest forms of communication and highest form of communicating love and communicating loving kindness specifically. I think that the divine or the spirit or the source or God or whatever you want to call it gets very, very happy every time we sing and every time we use our voices.
kindness that makes me think of the way the world could be, um, living in harmony amongst each other, all human beings, uh, all living beings, all animals, our relationship to the planet, a deep sense of calm, um, connection, um, togetherness, and uh, loving kindness is what I feel when playing music. I feel that music is the one of the best ways of communicating um, this feeling, this emotion, this um, mind state, this message, this energy. My sarod is so important to me because through it, um, I am able to channel my feelings, uh, my lineage, my ancestors, all the power and knowledge that came down through them to me. It's my means of expression. Um, I think that um, when I play and I go into that space, I can uh, reach something higher than myself, or at least catch a glimpse of it. Um, and I think that it's the most beautiful thing in life, music, and being able to play this instrument in this lifetime and uh, communicate that feeling to the listener. So loving kindness give rise to compassion, which is karuna in Sanskrit. And when I thought about compassion, I thought about suffering and pain, and immediately I thought about gypsy flamenco. Because for me, the way they sing, the singers of the Roma, the Roma people, the gypsies, when they sing flamenco just vocally, without guitar, without clapping, without drums, just the voice, and, and that's the original flamenco, I can hear incredible pain expressed through their voice. And so I called on the greatest flamenco singer that I know of in this world today, the greatest living female flamenco singer, which is Estrella Morente. And fortunately for us, for all of us, Adam Del Monte, our wonderful guitarist and good friend, he worked with her father. He knows her since she was seven years old running around because he was the guitarist of her father, Enrico Morente. And so we sent the song to Estrella Morente and she listened to the song and she said that she just loved this song. She just loved it. And she owned it, the way she recorded, the way she sang it, took it to a whole other level. She made it like a, a classic flamenco song. It's, it's amazing. When I heard this, uh, I was deeply, deeply moved when I heard her voice. So we have here uh, some videos from the recording of Compassion with Estrella Morente and Adam Del Monte and our percussionist, Jamie Papish. Sit back and enjoy. When I think of the word compassion, I feel warm inside, uh, like a softening of the heart. I feel inclusivity and acceptance. Also on a very personal note, um, having the opportunity to record this track with the incredible Estrella Morente uh, has a very special significance for me because I used to play with her father, uh, the late and great uh, Enrique Morente. Uh, when I used to live in Spain, we performed on several occasions, but never really got a chance to uh, record together. So recording with his daughter 
um, really closes a very big cycle for me and uh, it puts a nice ribbon, a nice cherry on top of this whole Morente experience. I hope you will enjoy this track as much as I enjoyed working on it and listening to it all the time. People have always asked me, what does the guitar mean for me? What does it mean in my life? And it's, a, it's a, both a simple question with a very complicated answer, but I'm going to try and be as, as, uh, as direct as possible. Uh, the guitar for me is an extension of my body and it's an extension of my soul. Uh, without the guitar, I'm, I feel like close to nothing. Uh, the guitar gives voice to my imagination, to my inspiration, and to my dreams. And uh, it's my lifelong companion and it's my entire life. What I feel when I hear the track Compassion is I feel that it's someone crying out, uh, someone struggling, and people come to their, to their aid and support them. Drumming is my self-expression. It's a way that I can speak into the world uh, when the words don't come. It's a place I can go to to get grounded and to continue my journey of self-improvement and it's a way of expressing my love and passion for music uh, which I feel is my the purpose of my life is to share music share rhythm with others now the track equanimity which is called Epeka in Sanskrit. This was the hardest track for me to compose music for. And I knew it would be the most difficult track. So I started the whole project working on that track. I thought I'm going to need a lot of time to just contemplate and research and find what to do with equanimity. Equanimity is, is, is a sense of all things are one oneness of all things but also equality of all things there's there, there's no no tragedies and no comedies and no uh, terrible moments and light moments everything exists and you feel it you have the emotions and you go through life with full emotional experience but you are aware that everything is one and everything is equal even life and death and how do you, how can you express this with music? It's a very, very, it, it, it's not like expressing joy. Expressing love and joy, th these, are, these are things that are immediately evoke musical ideas in me. But the idea, the concept of equanimity, I thought the best sound for this would be silence. And this is what Deva Pramal, by the way, Deva said that, that at the end of all the mantras, at the end, all the mantras, all the chanting, all the meditation lead to one place. And it's a place beyond words. It's a place of silence. So what should I do? Compose 15 minutes of music that is all silence and then sell it on Amazon for $3.99? I didn't think it's going to fly. Dr. Gold wouldn't approve that. <laughs> so I had to come up with something. And then I thought about my friend Kosaka, Hirokazu Kosaka. He's a great master of uh, Zen Buddhism archery. He's an archer. He's a Zen Buddhist priest, and he's a great visual artist. He's also the artistic director of Japan America Center, Center in Los Angeles, and I composed music for his productions since 1996. We worked for years together. So I called Kosaka and I asked him, what, what do you know about Epeka, equanimity? And he said, yes, we, we have Epeka, we practice Epeka. So I said, okay, so what, what should we do with that? And he said, why don't you come to my dojo where we practice the Zen Buddhist archery meditation practice because we chant the Heart Sutra before the practice and at the end of the practice. And that chanting of the Heart Sutra became the heart 
of the song equanimity. And so I invite you to uh, enjoy this behind the scene video on how we recorded equanimity and an interview with Hirokazu Kosaka explaining what the Heart Sutra means for him. Please. Prajna Paramita Sutra, it have 262 uh, words in it or character where we recite. It is about shunyata, a Sanskrit word for a void or empty. I feel that when we chant this uh, sutra, it is about healing of uh, tonation of sound. Uh, there are many, many, many uh, 260 characters to chant. Within these 262 characters, the tonation uh, is healing our body, the organs and the mind and the spirit. The sutra conclude with a mantra, gyate, gyate, para gyate, para so gyate, boji soka. It means gone, gone, everything you have gone to the other shore and awaken by the sutra. It's very important, uh, the sutra that is uh, chanted within the Mahayana sector of Buddhism. And so when I recorded this chant of Hirokazu Kosaka chanting the Heart Sutra with his followers, his students, and it's a very monotonic chant. It has only one note. It goes all the time. Da, 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 da. But they do a very deep sound from the belly. Very, very intense sound. And so I took that recording and I brought it to my studio and I thought about the string orchestra. For some reason, I have no idea why. I was thinking about violins, cellos, violas, and I start composing a very simple but, but elevating and meditative string orchestra music to go along with that chant. And I decided to feature the cello. And it became kind of a East meets West, this Japanese Zen Buddhist chanting meets classical Western orchestra featuring the cello and the cello became a very important part of this piece and so I called up my friend Dennis Karmazan who is a great master cellist we are lucky to have him and he has this ancient cello this it's a lion it's not a cello it's a lion and it it the sound of this cello is just so deep and so beautiful we actually have a video showing uh, Dennis playing this part for equanimity, and he talks about how, how he feels about equanimity and about the cello, his cello. So uh, check it out. Here it comes, the video of Dennis Karmazan. When I hear the word equanimity, I think of calmness. I think of composure. I think of serenity. 
So when I hear the beautiful music written by Yuval Ron, titled Equanimity, I feel like I'm laying beside quiet waters, that perhaps I'm laying down in a field of beautiful flowers and beautiful grass. Its beauty and serenity and calmness has a stillness and beauty all its own. The cello is important to me because it's been my life. I've grown up with it. I've been educated in music and the cello and its technique and its various possibilities of evoking beautiful emotion and passion. I feel that without the cello I would be a complete person and I feel honored to be part of this project uh, of equanimity written by Yuval Ron. And so for this equanimity track, along with the cello and along with the heart sutra chanting, I had to come up with a mantra because the whole album is based on mantra. So Dr. Gold actually suggested to me that um, the appropriate mantra would be Om. And in my yoga practice, we always practice, we always chant Om Shanti Om, always Om. Shanti Om. Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. And so I composed a melody for the mantra Om Shanti Om and added it to the Heart Sutra chant and the cello theme. And then I invited an incredible young, talented singer named Uyanga Bold, who's originally from Mongolia. And she went to the same music school that I went to, uh, Berkeley College of Music. Uh, and she arrived in Los Angeles uh, just a few years ago and came to one of my workshops and she wanted to study sacred sound chanting, sacred sound for healing. And uh, very, very quickly in the first workshop, I, I noticed that she is an extraordinary singer. She can sing anything. She, her range is just an unbelievable and the styles of music that she can sing but most importantly she comes from a heritage of shamanic Mongolian Buddhist tradition it's it's in her blood it's part of her tradition and heritage and so I invited her to chant for us the Om Shanti Om for equanimity so check out a little video from Uyanga Bold uh, very interesting what she says about what her voice means to her you know we i can tell you i can sit and tell you what i hear in her voice i can talk about it for hours but it's so interesting to hear what she thinks about her voice here we go My voice is important to me personally because it is the only thing that makes sense to me. It's a knowing for me that's deeper than um, anything in my life. It's uh, connecting to a part of me that's ancient, timeless, beyond my life. It's connecting to my ancestors' ancestors. Um, in all the lives that I've ever led, uh, connected to the part of me that uh, has, is reincarnating over and over. And also it's um, just getting out of the way of the divine flowing through me. So Osho said something to the effect of when the singer disappears and the song remains, then it's meditation, then it's a taste of existence. So if I can make space within me for the divine to resonate, to uh, just transmit and channel it uh, without 
<laughs> anything getting in the way, then um, that is truly uh, the most blissful uh, that I, one can be in this life, I think, provides me with um, bliss and truth and beauty and all the good things in life. So thank you. Yuval and Dr. Gold, I am so grateful for the music and just the space that you and the artists hold in our world, you know, for all the loving intention that's been poured into this album over the past few years. And um, I really appreciate all those artists who gave their talents to this project. It's really incredible. Uh, it was also beautiful to hear the Blair Studio Singers, the children's choir, on each of the tracks. Um, yeah, I noticed that the album is dedicated to the children who will grow up to embody these four divine states of mind. And that's a beautiful, beautiful dedication. So now, dear ones, everybody, it's your turn, and we get to answer some of your questions, and we'll do our best to respond. Um, if you haven't posted them yet, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. And our team will be scanning for the good questions. And may we have the first question, please? Yes. Ben Marks was wondering if uh, you both could tell us more about what it was like working with the children's choir. Yes. Uh, the children's choir came at the very end of the process. And I was looking for a kirtan choir you know, um, a yoga studio choir or a Buddhist organization that have a choir. And I, I contacted all the people that I know in town and all the different Kirtan uh, groups. And it was amazing. They all wanted to be with us. But it was incredibly difficult to coordinate the schedules of all their volunteers because they're all volunteers. And so at the end, I thought about the children choir because the whole album is dedicated to children who would grow to embody these higher virtues. So I said, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a children's choir? And I contacted the Blair Studio Children's Choir from Pasadena. Uh, and their conductor is Casey Dugardis, is a wonderful, wonderful conductor. And I really enjoyed working with the singers, with the kids. First of all, they knew the pronunciation perfectly when I arrived to record. Uh, the conductor, Casey, taught them exactly how to pronounce the Sanskrit. And also their, their heart, you know, when they start singing, I just felt my heart just expanded. It's the blessing of the sound of children. And so um, it, it was a smooth and beautiful experience for me. Thank you for the question so I can mention uh, this choir. Another question for you from Rachel. She was wondering... Uh, is this music available only for live stream, or can you buy a physical copy as well? Well, Beth has one copy, and I have one copy. I, we can prove to you that we have the physical CD. Beth has an open one. Mine is sealed. Beth, would you like to show them? Yes. Yes, here it is. It's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and this this was shipped to Amazon uh Three weeks ago, I think Amazon is the only service now that sells still physical CDs. There may be mm -hmm. a few other stores around the world, and they will have it as well. But I know that Amazon has it. It may not be on their website today. It should be today. But uh, if not today, it should be there any day. You can also contact the record company, Meta, with double T, metamindfulnessmusic.com. And they have a store on their website, and you can get the uh, CD on there as well. Uh, we also have streaming formats. They're everywhere now, and that's live today. So some of you may have pre-saved it, and you can use it. But um, you can find it just about everywhere. And there are also um, 48K versions on Amazon, YouTube, and Tidal if you're into high resolution. And I'd like to invite our listeners to uh, go to our website, because we have quite a bit more information there, including um, a program of practice, of a way of bringing these practices deeper into your own life. So again, that's at metamindfulnessmusic.com. 
I, w- I would like, before we go, um, I'd like to thank both Dr. Gold and Beth for being here, and especially Dr. Gold for initiating this uh, wonderful, incredible project. Without Dr. Gold uh, initiating it, none of us were, would, would have been here. None of this music w- would be ever composed or recorded. None of these wonderful artists would come together to work on it over the last two years. And all the impact that the music will make in the world in the next 100 or 200 or 500 or 5,000 years, it's all thanks to Dr. Gold initiating it and, and supporting it and being behind it. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Beth, for hosting us and helping us spread the word. It's been my pleasure. Um, before we say good night, if you've enjoyed the music, friends, uh, we encourage you to share the replay of our event on YouTube and Facebook. Um, share it to your family and friends and come in and join our groups on Facebook as well. And just spread the joy. It is so needed right now to take a, an hour out like we just did and see the beautiful art and music coming to life in our world. And good things do go on and and multiply. So please share. And um, maybe we can go out on a high note with another look at the album trailer, guys. And we'll just say, be well, everybody. Stay healthy. And namaste. Namaste. Namaste.